morning and Merry Christmas. 2011, almost behind us now. So many key questions as we head into the new year. And for the next hour, we've assembled a terrific group to talk about the year ahead and a reflection on where the country has been this year. Joining me, NBC's Tom Brokaw, Tom Friedman, Kathleen Parker, Mark Morial. Welcome to all of you and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you. I suspect, Tom Brokaw, that uh, families are getting together on this holiday and there's gifts and there's good times, but there's probably a little talk about where things are in their family, in their community, and in the country. And if you look at one key indicator, it's, uh, it's pretty downcast. The direction of the country, and look at the polling from the Wall Street Journal NBC News poll, nearly 7 in 10 Americans think the country is headed on the wrong track, in the wrong direction, and that economic anxiety seems to make this so much deeper than other periods of turmoil. Well, I, because uh, economic confidence and economic security is the underpinning of well-being of the country. In 1968, which I lived through, there was enormous turmoil, but everyone could get a job. We still had a manufacturing base in this country, and even though we had guns and butter going on in Vietnam, uh, there was a lot of money around. Now you have 20 million homeowners sitting out there either with a home that is worth less than their mortgage or in peril of becoming that, or it's an utter foreclosure that represents their net worth in many instances. And there's a real kind of terror in their lives, moreover, beyond the homeowner piece of it. I think the rest of the country just feels that they're not included in a lot of what is going on, that uh, the political debate on the Republican side seems to be confined to a reasonably narrow group of people who are driving that dialogue. Uh, the Democratic side seems to be kind of cordoning itself off from the middle that helped get this president elected. So I think there is good reason for a lot of anxiety out there. And a lot of anger, Kathleen Parker. I mean, if we've seen anything sort of define our politics, it is pure anger. On both the right, there's the Tea Party, and on the left, there's Occupy Wall Street. Well, I do think, absolutely. And, you know, the, the truth is the Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street people are, are really two sides of the same coin. You know, one is against big government, one is against crony capitalism. Um, and the truth is, you know, the, the successful candidate will pull those two people, those two groups together and, and help dissipate that anger. I think the frustration is simply feeling that not only is there nothing happening in the Congress, that nothing is moving forward, but that they don't really have any way of influencing outcomes. But the truth is they do. And, you know, the fact is, when you look at the gridlock in Washington that everyone is so mad about, it's really gridlock by design when you think about it. Because in 2010, the election pushed uh, the Republicans in to take over the House. And that was really a check on Obama. If you look at it, we have two big political movements in the last two elections. One in the 2008, it was a shift to the left. In 2010, a shift to the right. So 2012 is really a tiebreaker. <clears throat> and the big question is whether the American people are ready to fire President Obama. And that's a big one. One of the big questions, though, again, driving this idea of how cynical people are, how negative they feel about the country, is whether the country's in decline, Tom Friedman, or whether just too divided. You know, is it income inequality or is it, you know, something bigger going on in the country? Well, you know, I think, um, David, if we step back, I think we can explain a lot of what's going on in the country and, and in the world by the fact that we've actually gone from a connected world to a really hyper-connected world. And what that's done, actually, if the world were a single math class, the whole global curve has risen because every boss today has access to more cheap automation, cheap software, cheap robotics, cheap labor, and cheap genius than ever before. And as a result, average is over. Now, average is officially over. We've all got to find our extra, come with something new and extra to the table. So on the one hand, that's creating a lot of the anxiety, understandably, throughout the population. At the same time, that hyperconnectivity is giving people the tools to, to organize and protest against it from the right and the left. And at the same time, that hyperconnectivity is creating these huge income gaps. Because if you do have the talent, if you are really, really above average, if you're J.K. Rowling, mm -hmm. you know, you can now make more money in a totally connected world than ever before. So it's all wrapped up together in one process. Mark Morial, I mean, this is Christmas. And what does it represent, if, if not hope? And yet Tom referenced this. For so many Americans who owned a home, their nest egg was the equity in their home. And for too many Americans, that's gone. And frankly, it's not coming back. That really dashes a lot of hope. You know, the anger that Americans feel, I think, is uh, accelerated by the fact that the middle class has evaporated, that the recession has created a greater income inequality than ever before. Uh, white Americans lost 16 percent 
of their net worth in the recession alone. African Americans, 50 percent of their net worth. You've got a disappearing middle class, and the middle class and upward mobility, uh, and the sense that no matter where you were born in this nation, you could rise to the next level, and that it wasn't by jumping over a giant hill or a giant wall, uh, has really been, I think, the, 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 the lubricant that has helped to sustain this nation. So on Christmas Day, I think Americans are not only looking at the fact that they've lost their homes, many have lost their jobs, but it's like the woman that I ran into on Friday who said, I'm a laid off teacher. I do have a job, but I'm now a cashier at a grocery store. Can you help me teach? I want to teach. Uh, so you have many Americans and the unemployment rate does not tell uh, the story. So uh, the anxiety that many are experiencing, and I think today, is this sense of will it get better? Will my condition in life and my family's condition really improve no matter what happens in the election?